So this is lecture number 38, which is on energy in the simple harmonic oscillator. So let's make our lives easy, okay? Let's, you know how we have various general solutions? Let's just write our solution like this. X of t is equal to a times cos omega t, where of course, omega is still the square root of k over m. That all I'm doing is leaving out the plus phi naught term, okay? No reason to be carrying all that around for the moment. So the simple harmonic oscillator without friction is a system which uh, the energy just goes back and forth between being all in kinetic energy and being all in potential energy. So let's write down the potential, okay? So as usual, when we write down the potential, uh, the vertical axis, we put the potential. On the horizontal axis, we put the position. And the potential of a spring is 1 half kx squared. So that's a parabola. Now, when the spring is fully extended to wherever, like, and you let it go, However far you extended it is basically how much energy you gave the system. So there's going to be a point here where you started the thing off, which I could call like x max, but actually x max is a. Okay, so there's a point here on the x axis, which is a. And that's how far I've stretched this thing out. And so we know that right there, when x is a, then u is equal to the full-on uh, 1 half k a squared because that's 1 half kx squared evaluated at x equals a and then meanwhile once the particles released uh, if I stand over here and I release it from your right uh, I let it release it's going to start moving to the left and start picking up energy and now on this graph we draw the total energy as being a horizontal line. And the kinetic energy that it's picking up is, is this distance from here to here. So like if I got over to uh, this point, I would have that much in kinetic energy and I would still have that much in potential energy. When I get to the center, all of my 1 half Ka squared is now converted to kinetic energy. So it's all kinetic energy and no potential energy. And then as I go back up the other side, the kinetic energy starts decreasing until I get to the turning point, which is at x equals minus a, where the thing turns around and this starts over again. So we know now then, if u is equal to 1 half kx squared, the maximum the maximum of u, this is the maximum of u, the total energy, which we could call uh, Te, is equal to 1 half Ka squared. And if I'm not at the max point, then this is going to equal whatever kinetic energy I have, so that's, I'll call that capital K for kinetic energy, like we usually do, plus 1 half uh, Kx squared, that's the potential energy. So we have the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Now one thing we could do is we could check that our solution actually works. Because K we have an expression for, that's 1 half mv squared. Okay, and here we have 1 half kx squared. We could check and see if our solution actually works. Well, x of t is a cos omega t. If I want to get v, I have to take the derivative of this. The derivative of cos is minus sine. So I have v of t is equal to minus a sine omega t. But then I get one more omega from differentiating the inside here. So I'll squeeze that in right there. Minus a omega sine omega t. So uh, there's two terms here, 1 half mv squared. Well, that's going to turn into, I guess I have to plug it all in. I'll do it right here. 1 half 
m, now squaring this, I get a squared omega squared sine squared omega t. a squared omega squared sine squared omega t. Then I got this second term, which is plus one half kx squared. Now, x is that, so x squared is a squared cos omega t. Like that. Now we use though that omega is the square root of k over m. So the omega squared is k over m. And those m's now cancel. So both of these terms have a one half k a squared in them. Both of these terms have a one half k a squared in them. Ba boom and ba boom. And look at if I factor out that common k a squared, look what I'm left with. I'm left with sine squared omega t and cos squared omega t. Sine squared plus cos squared omega t is one. So I'm left with one half k a squared times one. So the grand sh upshot of all this is that uh, the, total connect, the total energy, uh, as we'd expect in a system that conserves energy and isn't losing any of the friction or anything like that, is just one half Ka squared. It's unchanging. But again, as x decreases from its maximum value, more and more is going into kinetic energy. Now this is there's one more thing I can do with this before I sort of close out uh, this section on the energy in this simple harmonic oscillator. There's one more thing I can do with this, and that is uh, I could solve for V. So if you say, oh yeah, I've got some total energy, I could rearrange this equation. I could move the 1 half kx squared to the other side. So let's do that. Then I've got 1 half mv squared is equal to the total energy minus 1 half kx squared. No real big new thing there. Multiply through though by 2 and divide through by m. So now I've got 2 over m times the total energy minus 1 half kx squared. And then take the square root of both sides and I learn that v is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 over m times the total energy minus a half kx squared. Not a real big deal, except it says that if you know x, so I choose some x value, maybe right here, okay? Then I can calculate 1 half kx squared at that point, which is that. I can subtract it off from the total energy. Now, if this is up here is the total energy, subtracting off that from that leaves me with, and this would be a good time to change colors, leaves me with that. Then I can multiply that by two over m, and then I can take the square root, and if the particle is here moving to the right, then I get v is plus this whole square root. And if the particle at this moment happened to be going the other way through that point, then I get V equals minus this whole square root. So a kind of a nice feature of uh, the fact that we've solved this problem and that total energy is conserved is you can tell how fast, if you wanted to ask what, what instead of what the velocity was, what the speed was, you could tell how fast it is, and then you don't even need the plus or minus, that's just the speed. You can tell how fast it is going not whether it's going left or right, but you can tell how fast it's going uh, by just computing that. Okay, well, I'm looking at the section I've just covered. It's night section 15.3 called the energy in, the sim in simple harmonic motion. And uh, I think I've covered all the main equations that he hit. So that's 15.3.